Hello everyone! Oh, hold on. Okay, you should be able to see me now. Okay, fixed. Um, okay, right. Hello everyone, I hope you are okay. Um, you should hear me in uh, just a second when it gets to you. Uh, what I'm going to do, as always, I'm going to get the auto zoom out, uh, which means that, um, auto focus rather, hold on, I'm just going to focus on my hand and that should be okay. Hello! Hi everyone! Okay, that should be fine. If I'm about to show you something, I'm just going to uh, switch the auto focus on. It is rather warm in here. I hope you are all okay. It is so, so warm. Um, so I've got a window open. I hope, and so if you care, if you, if there is like an insect coming in, bumblebee, a bee, a wasp, and you hear me screaming, and then suddenly I will start stop doing anything. You will know why, because there was an insect in the room, and I had to go and rescue myself. So just to let you know. It's lovely to have you all with me here. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you some of the techniques I've learned in Budapest, which is a very exciting trip. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I absolutely loved it. And um, and there were very few few very exciting things that they taught us. I don't actually have the actual products yet that you would've been doing things with. I will have them, but a lot of them were brand new. Um, but then um, when I do have them, that's hopefully going to be very exciting. I'll bring them to craft box, craft box, of course. But in the meantime, we will try to do with what we have in stash. Hi, Maria. Hi, Theo. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Nikki. Hi, do we get? <laughs> okay, fabulous. Okay, so what I'm going to do to start with, um, if you want to follow me and maybe go and dash get your own supplies just quickly, I'm going to be doing using gesso, texture paste, a few paints, mainly green, um, turquoisey uh, colours and brown and rusty, some sprays and um, that's pretty much it. I may use a stamp as well. So, okay. Um, and I will also be using a, hi, hi Caroline, I'm also going to be using a a napkin this napkin is from Stamperia it is on the website it is one of my absolute favorites I think I have about 10 in stock of this one if you want to get it it's amazing highly highly recommend it I will show you how it looks like on a project uh, yeah that should be fine I think I just I just realized I don't think I brought a white gesso with me that's fine I can always pop out and uh, find it somewhere I'm sure there's plenty of white gesso going around okay Let's start. So, <laughs> I thought it was 11 a.m. Yeah, I always do 11 a.m. Okay, so for the first few things I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you on tags because I thought it's worth showing you the technique and then we will move on to a project, okay? So, hello, hi Pam. Hi. Okay, so yeah, so if, um, I've got these tags are from Snipart and if you want them, I can get them onto the website. Uh, I've got quite a few in stock. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prime this. As I just said, um, I've been a bit of a muppet and didn't didn't bring my white gesso. I've got black gesso. I don't have white gesso, but I do have a chalk paint, which will do me just fine. So I'm going to use a chalk paint. This one actually is from Dali's collection. I don't think she stocks them anymore, but um, but yeah, that's what it is. And I do actually have a jug of water this time with my brushes. That's pretty much that pretty much never happens. I'm being very organized, although I am using toilet paper to dry them. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> hi, hi, Jill. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to take some of the, that chalk paint and then prime my tag. I quite like that off-white color as well, so that will work just fine for what I need. I just need a little bit of a coat of something. And the benefit of it is it dries in no time, which is very, very helpful. Yes, please, the tags. Okay, Caroline, just for you. Okay, um, just go, I'm going to try to be tidy in this process because normally I just never am, and then I suffer for it. So, um, and I've got quite a few things to show you. <laughs> Big fat cat is watching too, said Pam. Right, dry it. Okay. I can see that changing colour. So that's dry in no time. Okay, the thing we worked the most when I was in Budapest was the texture paste, sorry, was the cracking paste. 
Now, this was very interesting. The cracking paste, by the way, is still on the website. Strongly recommend it if you don't have it yet. I really, really fell in love with it. And it's heat stable, which is fantastic because you know sometimes you need to leave the paste to dry for however many hours. This one you don't. Um, obviously, if you put a really thick layer, you do. But um, but if you put kind of half decent you know, layer, then you don't. Now, this paste comes in two components, the primer and the actual paste. Now, the important bit of it is that um, the paste, the crackle paste, will work without the primer. However, it's not as flexible and it's not as long-standing and it can crumble afterwards if you don't put primer underneath. So, with this in mind, I am going to be using primer. And on my website, I'll, I only sell it with primer because that's what I've been told you should do. So I'm being a good girl and I sell it with primer. Okay, so I'm taking not too much of that primer, just more or less that much this primer will go a really long way i'm wondering if there's any other use for it i will find out because i think you will have lots left even after the texture paste is gone okay dry it very quickly now the primer does have to be dry but it dries in no time so you don't actually have to worry about it, you know, drying for ages. Okay, dry. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a palette knife and use my crackle paste, which is nice. It's got nice pasty texture, as you can see. And then I'm just going to apply it in a half, in a quite thick layer. I'm going to apply it and I'm going to show you how thick that layer is. Because let me just pull that down a little bit. So, uh... It's a bit darker, hopefully, in a second. Um, so that you can see, because it's what I'm doing white on white, so it may be quite hard to see. I have been taught to do in one direction, so I was just naughty there in the m a moment ago and just pulled it in the wrong direction. But And obviously you can make various smidges. Okay, let me just um, show you a little bit. Hold on. I don't know if you can see that very well. Let me just get the white balance a bit different brightness. Oh, I think that's better. I'm going to get the bright brightness up in a second, but I wanted to show you the texture of this. <gasps> Hi, Veruda. Hello. Okay. So here's the texture. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this with a heat gun, and you will start seeing how that crackles. I'm going to get this a little bit brighter, I think. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm just going to check. Some ladies are commenting on a post, so I just wanted to check. Uh, okay, fine. Right, okay, I'm going to dry this, and we're going to see how this crackles. I may need to pick this up. That's the beauty of the paste. It's just, I hope you can see this better this way. Um, that's the beauty of the paste, because it really... Um, it really dries and crackles really really quickly and the thicker you apply it the bigger crackles you will get oh, that was probably a bit too close yay i can see some thick crackles i can see some fine crackles i'm going to dry this and i'm going to show you in a second I should have put my glass mat here because otherwise I'm going to burn my hands. I've got this Tina Cousins song in my head at the moment. Weird. Okay. Right. So to start with, get this drying from a bit of a distance. And then you can get a little bit closer. This one has not started cracking very much yet, so I'm just going to help it a little bit by getting a bit closer. Okay, brilliant. Alright, so I've got my crackle paste crackled. Hi Hazel! Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to put the autofocus on. So that you can you guys can so you can focus on the crackles and hold on 
don't know if you can see that i think that might be the best view can you see those crackles obviously it's quite bright outside so just trying oh here we go that's a good view isn't it okay so i've got these on my little tag focus switch the focus off so it's not it doesn't do the annoying uh, in and outy okay now what we're going to do we're going to do some color blending for the color blending um uh, in Budapest, we have used Pentart, Deco, I believe they're called Deco Art Paints. They're fantastic. They're very good quality. Um, and I just absolutely love working with them. But the key thing with them is that they are slower drying than other Pentart paint, sorry, and other Pentart paints. For color blending, you do need slower drying paints. Now, I am also going to be do, using some baby wipes, some baby wipes, and I'm going to be taking the excess of the, um, I'm just going to take that a bit further down. I'm going to be taking the excess of the paint off with the baby wipe. So, um, with this in mind, I'm going to use four colours of the Distress Paint. Distress Paint is the paint by Mr. Tim Holtz. And I'm going to uh, just get the window a little smaller so i can see any and see what you're saying guys okay i'm using four colors and um and i'm going to use one as a base color probably didn't this turquoisey i'm hugely into my turquoises at the moment hold on these are brand new so i should probably take the little seal off okay so i'm going to squeeze a little bit on my mat so i've got some of that um turquoisey color um, and then, oh, okay, this one does not have a little tabby thingy, unless it does. No, it does, doesn't. Wow, that one looks like it's been actually, okay, interesting, opened before. This one does. These all came from America a really long time ago, and I never opened them, actually. Okay, get that blue. I should probably give them a little bit of a mix. Oh, yes, my mistake for not doing that before. Okay, getting a little bit of a blue and then getting a little bit of this one which has a little pulley tabby maybe they forgot to put a little pulley tabby on the other color before okay. right so get this one out oh nice colors very similar to what we worked with right taking my brush and my toilet paper don't tell anyone and i'm going to cover the end the well, majority of this tag with this color here and then i'll take a little bit of green and blend that in and then a little bit of that blue blend that in and you can see i'm working fairly quickly i just want a little bit of that color blending going here okay fab right now what i'm going to do with that i'm going to take my baby wipe maybe just let it dry we'll let it settle for just a second this is a water-based paint so i don't want to take you know a huge amount off i should probably do it with a dry dry bit of paper i need to you need to get some more kitchen towel okay so i'm just going to take some of that color off just to reveal my crackles So it's looking like this now, as you can see. Now, I'm going to give it as up with a heat gun and I'm going to add a little one more coat. Now, this is really working with the supplies you've got because um, if I was working with the Deco Art paints, the ones by Pentart, they're much, much thicker. So obviously, you know, if I took some of the colour off, I would just smudge a lot of it, that colour because the, the colour was really, really um, thick and really creamy. With this, um, I'm, just going, I'm just going to sort this out by doing more than one layer and then obviously blending the colours. Oh, do you know I love I'm loving these colors. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that kind of highlight here and there. Maybe give it a very, very quick zap with a heat gun. And once it's still dry, it's still wet, I'll take oh better. 
I'm going to take some of my um, dry towel, aka toilet paper, and then reveal some of those crackles. Oh, loving this. I absolutely love this. Okay, so let me just uh, switch the focus on. I've got the blinds down now so that you can uh, you can actually see what's happening. All right, here we go. Got the crackles, got the colour. That should hopefully focus at some point, she says. Okay, really loving this. Loving the crackles. Okay, so I'm going to keep this as my reference. Um, for some of the further projects I'm going to do. I'm going to put in my little drawers, which is very exciting. That's what we will do in our uh, introduction to mixed media um, workshop. We will have lots of these tags and you can guys uh, write at the back of it, write what, how this effect was achieved. Um, but yeah, absolutely loving this. Now, if you wanted some of the areas to be a little bit lighter, you can always take a baby wipe and then just gently wipe it wherever you would like this more kind of weathered look hold on and then you can really get this the paint was here type of look it looks amazing especially if you're fairly light-handed okay let me just show you that this is such a great effect a really weathered um look on this tag can you guys see that i probably was a little bit too heavy handed here but you can see around this area how great it's looking uh you know when you just have a very very gentle touch and obviously the drier the paint the more difficult it's going to be to take off so the harder you're going to have to scrub that all right loving this effect absolutely lovely okay so that was that was um Technique number one we were doing. And then I will show you the whole project with this as well, which is very exciting. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you is I wanted to talk a little bit about patina and rust. We have done loads on patina and rust. I mean, patina and rust is such a huge thing at the moment. Um, so it would be hard to, um, to do without. Um, I'm just tidying up as I go. Um, now, on the website at the moment, you have the huge pots of patina and rust um, paints. These are by Prima, um, but they're the same as Pentart. I mean, I will let you draw your own conclusions um, <laughs> when I say that. I'm not sure if I can say it, so I would let you draw your own conclusions. Okay, so, um, rust and patina. These are the pots you have on the website. Uh, and I have all six colors so three rust colors three patinas they are ginormous and they're very very heavy they will last you forever the brilliant value for money as well just to let you know okay now let's talk a little bit about rust and patina effects um i've got this frame and i've got three actually because i really wanted to show you quite a few of the effects and how you can achieve it with the products you already have which is very exciting. Let's use our own supplies. Okay, so rust. I'm going to put some of the rust paste. So this is a little bit of how to use the rust paste. I'm going to use a little bit of rust paste on this frame. You could gesso it with black gesso, I haven't, or white gesso, I haven't here. Um, probably would be a good idea. I'd probably say black gesso would work best. So I'm just going to, now the rust paste from Prima does contain uh, the um, sand particles, it's basically, basically got grit um, and it's the same with the orange version of this paste which I'm going to add a little bit to this frame at the bottom. Oh thank you Theo, do you know what I usually get them so mucky I wouldn't even know where to possibly t uh, put them. Um, right, I'm also using the uh, orange rust. I shouldn't be putting my brush into this, but I'm being naughty. And what I'm going to do, whilst my brown paste is still wet, you can do it when it dries, of course, but whilst my brown is, paste is still wet, wet, I'm going to add a little bit 
of that orange. Just a little highlight here and there. Okay, that is one of the easiest ways to achieve your rust, and rust look. We're talking rust here. There's also a red one where you just literally, you're just adding a little smidge of that, of the, sorry, no red, yellow, yellow paste, where you're adding a little smidge of that yellow on top. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the other side of that frame using different technique. I have shown you that technique before, but I thought it was it would be nice to remind you how that works. So, for that technique to work, you can really do it from scratchy scratch, if that makes sense. You can really, really do it from scratch. And actually, I can probably show you how to do it from scratch. Or you can kind of cheat halfway. In your... Um, in your mixed media boxes, you had the sand paste by Peveo. This is one of my absolute favorite pastes at the moment. I really, really, really love it and would highly recommend to anyone. We do have some on the website as well. Now, I have used so much of this stuff in the past. So the sand paste, this white one already has grit in it, as I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a palette knife and I'm going to take some of the uh, brown pigment. This pigment is by Prime, uh, Primark, <laughs> by uh, Collard. I'm going to add, to add some of that pigment to my paste, just like that, and give it a good mix. Um, if you have brown pigment, it will probably work better. This one can turn a little green, well, probably would turn a little green now the more I add the, the, the darker it's going to become but to rescue the situation I can take a little bit of brown paint and this is how you work can you work with those supplies you know no matter if you do have uh, how, I mean how you can achieve the effect no matter if you have specific supplies or not probably shouldn't be saying that but you know I'm saying it anyway. Okay, so I'm using some more of that Tim Holtz paint, but I need to open it first because this one is not has not been opened in the past. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of that. That is probably a little bit too light. Hold on, just give it a little good mix. Is there going to be mixed media box outs and what sort of things will be in it? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Caroline. We only just had the mixed media box. That is a little bit chocolatey, chocolatey that one. Okay. I'm making, <laughs> this happened last time. Do you remember? I was making kind of poo rust, not the thingy rust. But I'm going to take some of, some of the uh, rust powder as well and just put that one in that will probably work great and make it nice and dark okay. where is my brown pigment when i need it i love when this happens it's like she says it's like live tv situation hold on add some more of my uh of my uh pigment <laughs> The pigment that works really well with this is called Ocean Wave by uh, Color Art. I'm using Autumn Leaf, and Autumn Leaf has awful lot of um, green in it. That's why I'm getting a lovely weird effect to a degree, which I don't have. Okay, I'm going to work with what I've got in here. I'm going to add a little bit of that. Ooh, I like this. Okay. So I've got this weird brown going on, but you get the idea from this. Um, if you have a brown pigment by anyone, use the brown pigment. Um, when will next mix media be? In two months. 
in two months, Caroline, in a month it's going to release, and then in another month it's going to arrive. So yeah, use any brand pigment, use some texture paste, and then um, if it has already grit in it, that's great. If not, then you can add grit to it. Now, on the website, I do have, at the moment, a um, sand, art sand, and it's look like, it looks like this and it is basically a quartz sand and this one's in white i also have black but not on the website so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a little patina paste with this one there is a patina paste from prima and we're going to use it on one of the sides but i'm going to put a little bit of that sand gritty gritty sand and use another paint i'm not really experimenting here <laughs> And I'm going to use another paint. Um, that sounds like beatboxing. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use another paint to uh, achieve this kind of turquoisey effect. This one is the fabric one by Shimmer, Cosmic Shimmer. Uh, I'm just really using what I've got in my stash already. So I'm just going to mix this up. Take a palette knife. And... I'm gonna need probably just a little bit more. Any turquoise paste, turquoise paste, and then a little bit of the sand. I just think the sand is just so underrated. I absolutely love this. Love the texture, it's brilliant. Now, patina normally is not shimmery, but I am going to make my shimmery because I just wanted to show you how you can achieve this effect with whatever paint you've got in, in your little stash. Or in, your, or in your big stash whatever stash you've got okay here we go gonna use some of that and then pounce it on top of my uh, and that will melt with this lovely brown as well that's a nice effect okay just add that sand sand um, blue patina color on my brush <laughs> crazy okay um i really love this effect that we got here so i'm gonna take some of that like lovely pooey brown sorry i'm just being so charming at the moment and then just add it add it add to the effect absolutely loving this so uh eccentric in a way like oh isn't that fabulous love that effect i really do right that needs to be heated um is that the black sand in the test tube in mixed media box yes it is actually i've got white one here um uh, but uh, yes it is the same thing rodder right i'm just going to dry this and then we can give a, a little bit of a highlight and i will show you the same in um in zoom hi bj sorry i didn't see you I like that rust look. Um, this rust paint, the rust paint that we created ourselves, that looked a bit funny to start with, is definitely getting darker as it dries as well. I can see it here; it's getting darker. Yay! It worked. Yeah, excited about little things. Okay. Oh, that's, that's okay it's still a bit wet but right okay let's zoom in let's show you what i've done here so this is the rust paste by prima straight from a jar this was the very one the very one we have done ourselves and then this is a, a little patina paste with uh, the um with the any turquoise paint this one was shimmery so it doesn't have to be shimmery so it happened that this one was any patina paint um and some 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 grit some sand some art sand you know if you want to use the sand from a beach that's probably okay how well actually that's probably not okay because it probably has a lot of organic matter so it might start to smell after a while just to let you know but this is what um it looks like i really hope you like it this would just make a really lovely workshop live workshop okay 
So that's the uh, frame I created. I may use it in one of the projects. So this is something I really enjoyed making as well. So we have our texture and then we have our crackle paste and then we have the paint. Now, if you give me one moment, I'm just gonna tidy up my little uh, work surface here because otherwise I'm not really sure if we're gonna have any space anymore. The other thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some rice paper. Um, so the rice paper has obviously been a big um, hit of, um, of the Budapest trip and I absolutely loved it. Um, it's uh, it's just the rice papers grow have grown on me. I thought they're above a, I don't know, they're above a gimmick, um, if you know what I mean. I just thought, oh, you know, rice paper, is they really worth the money? Have to say, it is worth the money because the quality is fantastic and the effects you can get with it. I mean, it's just, it's just like an instant, it's an instant mixed media project when you get it. So definitely a big fan. And they have a new range of rice paper coming out. The Christmas and the kind of steampunky um, lace, old vintage lace. There's, there's a brand new collection coming out in August, mid August, I believe. And I will have tons of it. Um, so be ready. It is a beautiful, you will certainly want it. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, collection and beautiful papers. And they only made a thousand, one thousand of it. Because they make those, their collection such a limited stock, limited um, run. Okay, so um, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to do a project. I'm going to implement the techniques we've just learned and use some black gesso. And to start with, I'm going to prime this um this box this is just a box from i think it's from some kind of essential oils things um and i'm going to do the whole project the one i actually shown you on facebook when i was in pentart i think that was a pentart project very exciting right okay take my brush i'm only going to cover the top with black gesso and then dry it quickly because i just don't want you to we don't want to bore you with looking at watching the paint to dry but I will show you how to implement those techniques on an actual project. Oh, loving a wide brush. Okay, that's fine. It will do for now. Okay, and then I'm using a uh, I'm using gesso, black gesso from Golden. Right, try this. The bonus of this gesso is it dries in no time. Just to be honest, the Pentat one dry in no time as well, very, very quickly. Okay. Here we go. You do need to make sure that your gesso is completely dry, especially if you're going to put, be putting a primer for the texture paste. To make sure make do make sure it's completely dry and it doesn't take long to dry at all okay I think we are pretty much there whilst I'm painting this with a primer who is excited about the mixed media release release by yours truly how exciting I cannot wait all the goodies are on their way to me now and I think that it's gonna be fabulous it's gonna be on a website on the 15th of July and it's going going to be on uh, Hochanda on the 16th of July very very exciting cannot wait okay so I've got my dry brush now dry ish clean anyway okay and then I'm going to take the primer here we go. And get that one nice and primed for my crackle paste. And then need to let it dry. Everyone went quiet. Everyone did is doing housework. 
Okay. You don't need much of that primer at all. So. Oh, I did, Caroline. I really did. It was great working on the colours. Okay, right. Now I can give this a zap with a heat gun. <laughs> right again the primer does need to be completely dry as well just to let you know dry you will know when it's dry when it turns clear um, because otherwise it is a crackly uh, sorry it is um kind of opaque white uh, effect so we're going to use the same technique as i used on the little tag and i'm going to apply the texture paste sorry the crackle paste in different thicknesses now we don't want to be here all day and we probably want to get to the um point where at which we can see the finished effect of this um, work so I am going to not put it too thickly but just thickly enough um, and add some here fab oops I must have had some sharp bit on the end that's fine just put a little bit um, rest into the pot and then dry it. Now we should we should see the crackle appearing fairly soon. They are really appearing on the side here because that was really really thin. But it certainly will not take long until we get some decent crackles. Oh, love it! Obviously. If you have lots of time, the thicker the better, yes? Uh, it depends what uh, effect you're going for. Um, normal, it really depends on what effect. If you want, if you want to have uh, a lot of texture, then yes, you can add it thicker. Uh, but it's just, I would, I would say it really depends on the type of project, more so than on, uh, on the, the amount of time. All right, I think that was pretty much dry. That's the beauty of this paste. It just um, dries so, so quickly. All right, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of paint on top. Now I am quite tempted to use this fabric paint and I would like to trial it for you guys to see if it works or not. And then we can find out together. Right, I'm gonna take a brush. Unfortunately, my water is really mucky from that black gesso, but it's okay. That should hopefully still work ish. You can always take a baby wipe and just give it a little bit of a clean. Yeah, that should work just fine. Okay, check that. Put it in the bin. Right, okay, let's have a look at that blue. It is quite see through. I quite like it as a base actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of green as well. Now the sun is shining so I'm going to take the brightness down a little bit so you can see me a bit better. Um, hopefully that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of green. When the sun goes down I will um, turn it down. Um, okay, add a little bit of green and then do some colour blending. So I'm blending the two colours here and then maybe just add a little bit more blue. And then that green here. Oh, loving this. I think it's such a beautiful effect. 
Can you guys see those? That just looks absolutely amazing. Loving it. Really, really enjoying it. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I am going to dry this. And what I would like to do is I would like to age the actual cracks uh, or actual crackles or cracks. So I'm going to spray this with a brown spray and then wipe it. I will test it first. Actually, I will probably test it on my little tag just to make sure that I'm not going to ruin the complete look. Oh, I'm seeing a song by Tina Cousins. Oh, goodness me, it's such a blast from the past. probably needs just a wee bit more I think the crackles on my piece came out really beautifully let me show you that let me show you a little zoom now what I want what I want to do is I want to add some brown in in those crackles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take brown uh, spray and in actually in my new collection there is going to be um, there is going to be a spray, brown spray. So that's very exciting. I am going to trial it on the corner and see if we can sort it out, it, uh, see if I can wipe it off first. Now, I would get a baby wipe at the ready. Okay, right, I've got a baby wipe. Now with the shimmer sprays, is with detached angel sprays and shimmer sprays, um, you do need to shake them really well. Um, and you ideally you should tap them um, just to make sure that you're not uh, plugging all that mica into the um, tube and I'm going to give it a spray all right and what I'm going to do is I want to wipe this a little bit oh yes fab okay so I want to age this quite a lot and I want to uh, I want to the um, mist to get into the crackle but I don't want this to be on top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pat that dry and actually I can probably just take a little bit of dry paper pat that dry and then take that off just for that a little aged vintage effect oh, okay that's just a little bit on my uh oh i'm loving this okay so i'm getting this aged effect now and my crackles are a little, a little bit more visible okay <laughs> i'm just reading your comments all right, so we are we have nice and vintage effect on here. Actually, I need this paper here. So we've got nice and vintage effect on the very top. Really loving this. Just going to get some bit drier. Just make sure this nice and nice and dry. So if your colours are a bit, little bit too bright, or you want a little more, I'm going to get that brighter. Um, if you want a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of vintagey look, then just spray it with a brown spray. And because this, because the paints were shimmer and the spray is shimmer, you get this effect of both brown and um, and then tur turquoise being nice and shimmery. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is now I'm going I'm going to assemble the box and. For this, we need a little bit of a muslin cloth. And here we go. And I'm going to take my scissors. Oopsie daisy. And make them muck in my paint, because why not? Just gonna cut a little bit out. And then rip them, rip that into smaller pieces. Not in smaller pieces, in longer pieces actually. Okay. Okay, so 
getting this out here and then my uh, getting my lovely gauze or however you want to call it muslin cloth love it love working with this stuff okay and because it's quite white at the moment I'm just going to take some paint and actually fabric paint is probably going to be great for this and I'm just going to make this the same color as the rest of my piece so very gently I'll probably just take a brush and then give it a little bit of a coat now you may want to um, spray your muslin cloth first just to get you know just so you don't have to um, you know um, put so much paint on it or just wait um, you know I'll, I'll get it really really stiff you know you know you know oh, for goodness sake Anna just find better vocabulary okay and then it is really a bit of a C, a C project slash effect isn't it I think it's lovely actually when we when we did that uh, did the um, a project at Bentart um, we did have uh, some seashells that the tutor brought uh, I think she was lovely by the way I need to find her name she's so talented and she's so kind as well um, I had such a lovely time such a lovely time with Dally and Joe and and Karen and Paul Fun fabulous time okay here we go okay so I'm just gonna open this up and I'm gonna dry this my fingers are all mucky <laughs> okay here we go one then getting this one I'm just gonna take my heat gun and just zap it quickly It's all going to be in very similar colour tone. Okay. That will do just fine. Okay, so I am going to be using the same frame. I think this will just look fabulous on this project. And it's nice and big as well, which will look just great. And I'm going to add this, um, this muslin cloth here, drape it a little bit. And I'm going to use my glossy accents. This one is actually via Pentart, <laughs> glossy accents via Pentart that I've been kindly gifted uh, by the Pentart team. And just add a little bit here and there, just literally so that it catches. Um, and then just add some here. Lovely. Okay. And then. When I paint the sides, I'm going to leave this hanging because when I paint the sides of this um, box to finish it off, I am going to adhere this, the, this, the sides of the uh, muslin cloth just at the bottom. So for now, just, just to show you the actual, um, you know, the actual top, I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to take a little bit draped around, a little X maybe, something not too regular. And very pretty looks like a fishnet oh loving this okay oopsie doodle that just went all over all right just gonna add my frame so I've put quite a lot of glue you know I love my glossy accents and this is like glossy accent but it actually dries a bit quicker which is even more of a bonus Oh, fabulous. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got a little, um, I've got a stencil. Hold on. And actually, I could do with a swirl stencil, but I'm not sure if I can uh, find it anywhere. Oh, no, that's fine. I will use this one. I should have probably done it before I adhered the uh, before I adhered the frame. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little paste and just add it in just a few spots of uh, this piece. Um, I am going. I, I do want something darker because I want to break through this kind of blue, bluey colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own coloured paste. Um, for this, I am going to use. Come on, where are you? That's a wrong paste. Here we go. I am going to use the concrete paste via Pebeo. 
like that. It's very light, it dries in no time. One of my absolute favourites as well, as much as the uh, sand based. And another thing I'm going to do um, with this one is I'm, a, I'm going to use a colour, but also I'm going to use a little bit more grit, which is going to be very exciting. Okay, so for the colour, I think probably maybe brownie will do that I'm thinking of or maybe I will just add a little bit of a spray I think I'll add a little bit of a brownie color right okay so I'm going to take a little uh, I'm going to take some of the spray and spray into this and then mix it up just to make a bit of a different color you shouldn't add too much because otherwise it's just going to disturb the consistency of the paste so that just made it a little bit more uh, beigey brownie colour but we want it a bit darker so I'm going to take some paint oh actually oh yeah found what I was looking for can you remember the white liquid that came in the first mixed media box can you remember what was so what to do with it Nicola it was a um, the solution and it is a you need to put it in a spray bottle add three at four pattern it's one to four one to hold on three parts of water one part of the solution but you can't add less than that and basically then if you spray it on a project it fix, it's a fixative for your pigments or you can make a you can make pigment spray sprays with it like a like you know like a color art pigments pigment sprays and then um and then that just fixes them in place so they won't move and right so now I'm gonna take so I am using a paint by Prima and this one is called Raven Black it's one of the sparks paint and I want to turn this into a little bit of a iron paste if you have bought iron paste with me from me when I from when I had it um, in stock I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Hochanda now, but don't, you know, don't take, don't, don't take it personally. Then congratulations. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say is, if you have purchased that paste, it's fantastic for this. It's made with proper iron particles or whatnot, and it's brilliant. Oh, I love that grey. I think this is going to be fantastic. Now, we need a little bit more paste. And also, I will add some microbeads. Now, you have been, you guys have been asking me to get microbeads, the coloured metallic microbeads, um, on the website for absolute ages, and they are finally on the website in a set of four, uh, in Sunset, Berry, and Natural. They are fantastic, and I really, really recommend them. Now, if you were wondering what size you're getting, it's a big size. It's a big, um, you know, size vial so it's not just like a tiny little vial i know you can't necessarily tell how much i think they're 30 mil those um so they're great oh sorry 15 mil 15 mil okay so i am going to add to this lovely texture some of the some of the um orange microbeads it doesn't matter what color because they're what they will just they may peek the color the color may peek through um but it's not necessarily that important. Oh, I love that concrete look. One of my colours in my collection is the concrete. <gasps> Bye! Bye, Chelly! Okay, just going to add this to my project. Um, where is that stencil here? All right, just going to put a little bit underneath. And then just get that through here and there, just to break through that monotony of that, um, you know, green and green and green. Oh, loving this. My my fingers are all in paint. The stencils, the stencil. If you are wondering, this is one of the snip art stencils. Okay. Oh, fab. Oh, I'm absolutely loving this. 
this is such a great effect let me just tidy up my mess and then i'll bring this a little bit higher so you that you guys can see what i'm doing okay here we go we need a little more of the uh baby wipey situation baby wipey situation look at me how good for me of me to tidy this up all right okay now i am going i need to zap it with a heat gun oh thank you rhoda <laughs> i hope i'm not being too bossy too teachery Now the beauty of adding coloured microbeads into my texture paste is that now and again they will peek through, they will show through, so you will show, you will show that little hint of colour which I think is great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to take some of my uh, glossy accent a fakey bitter thingy. Um, Karen was packing the boxes today and uh, and and she <laughs> and I kept talking to her in those kind of um, fakey this thingy that thingy <laughs> and she was uh, and she said is that a technical term <laughs> bless her okay so um yes uh, I've got some art stones I did have art stones on the website they're exactly the same to what are in here again draw on conclusions I'm not saying anything um, and I'm going to add the art stones randomly and I'm also going to add some more microbeads again if I may say so and sorry not trying to be too salesy here but the the microbeads I have on the website are absolutely fantastic they're br brilliant brilliant big size for mixed media I highly highly recommend them please trust me on that you will love them and they're just great price for the as well okay so art stones taking some of those and then just dra uh, just dropping them into that uh, glossy accents. This is my preferred method. Just pour a lot of fairly liquid glue or some kind of medium wherever you want your um, embellishments to be, and then just pour them. They will stick. The bits that don't stick, don't worry. Um, I'm just going to add some to the side because they're actually quite nice wherever they dro they fell and dropped. Um, I may just add a little bit here. So whatever does not stick, it will just fall off and you're just going to shake it off when your project is dry. That is the idea. So now I hope you guys can see because I'm monitoring the light level here. Okay, so obviously you're not going to have that many around. But um, I quite fancy some here and then we fancy some here. Okay, here, here. Oh, loving this. The reason why I'm lo loving this, um, <laughs> Caroline, uh, message me. Give me a drop me a message because I think I have about three left. So do drop me a message. Um, I might have some. Um, but um, yeah, we we we. I think we when we when we finished all of them, we realised that we have three of overstock. So do do message me. Okay, um, going back to our project, I've added some of um, those art stones, and loving this. Added some art stones. I'm gonna close my little art stone thingy. Another thing is I am going to use more microbeads now. With the uh, wide array of colours you have, I've got the green ones, I've got the blue ones, I've got the light light green ones, and they would come in one set. There's another tealy colour that will come in that set as well, which I don't have open tube of. Um, but then um, you will you will have those. Uh, you'll have four, one more in there in that particular set. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing I've done a moment ago. So I'm just going to add some glue here and there i'm going to add a little bit on the, on the frame and then just stand on there so i just do did a little trail again don't worry if you have to, if you haven't you know if you have um 
sorry, don't worry if you're going to pour, pour the microbeads and they will just go everywhere. Wherever you didn't add glue, as long as your project is dry so far, wherever you haven't added glue, they will just fall off. Just make sure you're not working on a carpet or, you know. Um, I actually now have lots of microbeads under, under my, um, my floorboards <laughs> and they just make, make terrible noise <laughs> every time we work on it. So just be careful with that. Okay, so I'm just going to pour some microbeads there and whatever I've added a drop of glue on my frame, which is in just a few spots like that. And this is tone on tone, so obviously I'm not going to show that much, but we are going to add just a little bit more in some other places. The, the, the secret with microbeads on a project like this is to do it as uh, randomly as possible. So I'm going to add some more blue, or rather some blue, not more blue. And that will be quite random as well. Oh, nice. And then I think I'm just going to add some, some green around here and around there. This is a light green from the same set. Okay. Now, I want this to dry definitely need to get the vacuum cleaner out really really need this to dry okay I'll shake the excess off I do have hold well on definitely need to bring a vacuum cleaner here um, so I do need uh, I do need a little bit more I've got some more glue on the side where I didn't actually pour any of the micro beads and I really want to have um, everything covered so I don't have any bolt spots with the glue on. Okay, so give us up with a heat gun. Any excess is going to fall off, which is fine. And this glue, this, this glossy accents version, is dry, it does dry really, really fast. I'm definitely in love with the pent up products. As you know, it's just such a good quality. Look at my hands! Crazy lady. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, just to bring a little bit of highlight to this piece of art that I've created here, it, which is actually nearly dry, which is fantastic. Okay, so just to add a little bit of highlight, I am going to take the wax by Pentart and I'm going to pop a little bit on my finger and just open the window a little bit because it's getting a, dry, a bit dark. Oh, husband just brought me a coffee, bless him. Okay, uh, and I'm going to add some Pentart wax. And as I said, this one is brass beautiful stuff and what it's going to do is just going to add this little bit of highlight it's going to lift your project now i am hugely into waxes at the moment and i would say if you don't owe one wax you definitely definitely should consider it because it just makes such a difference and and this one wax will last you forever there's just no doubt about it this pot, I will not use it in my lifetime as a crafter, I reckon. Judging by the amount you need, um, it's just fantastic. And I also would say the basic, the brown, the gold, sorry, the brass, the gold, the silver, and maybe some of the chameleon ones, and you will have them forever. Just make sure that they're nicely sealed, you know, they don't, you don't leave them open for too long, and you're there. Now, just going to, you should wait for these to dry a little bit more, probably. But I am going to be a little, little naughty because I don't want you, want to keep you forever. I'm just going to add that. Okay, and then maybe a little bit on those micro beads and definitely some of that on that grey. Another thing I'm going to do, just to finish, if you want to put an embellishment in the middle here, I would say, do you know what, go for it. Now I've got my, now I've got wax under my extension, which is great. It's a new thing, nail extensions, you see. I've decided that as, a as an next nail technician, I should have better hands. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of wax around on the edges. 
and you could use your brown paint as a bit of a waxing um sorry as a bit of a um aging medium and actually i am going to be having the uh, the aging uh, liquid i'm going to be stocking the aging liquid from pentart it's fantastic and i fell in love with it during the workshop it's just fantastic i think it's definitely solvent based it's not water based a lot of the products from pentart are water based but this one is solvent based so here is the piece i've created i would say that i really like those those but i will probably add a little bit more wax when the whole piece is a bit more dry there's lots of techniques in here. You've got your rust, you've got your patina, you've got your own texture paste made using with normal texture paste and you have microbes and colour in them just to break through that blueness. You have your crackle paste, you have ageing of the crackle paste, you've got wax, um, you've got your microbees poured around, um, you have your um, your pebble, the pebble stones or art stones. You've got so, so much in here. Um, so this is what we created, a pen tart. I love the workshop. I hope you really like the workshop, this one, this online workshop as well. If you want any of those products, do give me a shout. I will be stocking a lot of them when my order from pen tart arrives and have a lovely rest of your week and uh, not that many hours of it left. Um, but um, don't forget there's new Stemperia new uh new texture diaries on the website and also um there's some oh there are also the new statements on the website as well so if you want anything craftbox.co.uk i'm sending you lots of hugs and have a fantastic rest of the sunday and i'll see you again next time bye